So now, to continue where we left off, we established that tissues and organs, having them, is a body plan that's different from a separate class of animals known as the periphera, which do not have clearly defined tissues and organs. Thus, we have a comparative uh, characteristic that we can use to understand the body plans of certain animals. Okay, This is the first major characteristic to focus on. The next major characteristic in terms of body plans to focus on um, is the idea of symmetry. And so a lot of people already know what symmetry is. We're just going to broadly define it in terms of uh, biology for just a second. So this is a bit of a lengthy definition, but uh, it's necessary in order for us to establish what symmetry is in the biological world. So symmetry can be uh, summarized very well in figure 32.8. It really helps looking at this figure, again, simply because I cannot draw some of the important uh, visualizations necessary for understanding something as visual as a body plan. So what is symmetry? Symmetry is the following. It is the arrangement of body structures so we have an arrangement of body structures in relation to a particular axis of the body. What does that mean? Give me a second. In relation, uh, oh, not in particular, but in relation to a particular axis of the body. So that is a very weird definition, uh, but I'll try my best to explain what it really means and what you should really focus on. Now, first and foremost, what you should appreciate is the fact that we have body structures being arranged. That is a big animal characteristic. Why? Body structures means that there are many cells, and multicellularity is a key animal characteristic that we've wholeheartedly established in the prior couple of videos, and we've elaborated on it with differentiation as being an important organizational tool of these body structures, but that's besides the point. Let's get to the actual symmetry. Best way to understand what this means is to look at the three types of symmetry seen in the animal world. First and foremost, we have to look at radial symmetry. So what is radial symmetry? Think of radial symmetry as a wheel or a cylinder, okay? As a wheel or a cylinder-like symmetry. And I'll do a very rough drawing in just a second. A radial, radially symmetric organism, an animal specifically, is going to be an animal that has multiple, that's the key word here, don't forget this, multiple planes uh, that divide, that divide animal into mirror images, into mirror images images. So what do I mean by this? Think of a wheel or think of a, a circle, okay? Basic circle. I'll do a one circle here. I have one plane that I can draw that will make this circle a mirror image of each other. So let's say I did a, a, a slice of this circle right there. That was very badly done. Let's say I did it right there. That was even worse. Let's say I did it right there. Okay, perfect. So that's roughly symmetrical, right? Both sides are roughly symmetrical. What if I drew the same circle roughly the same circle, and did a plane, a slice right there. Both sides are still roughly symmetrical and still essentially the same thing here. What if I took that same circle and did it diagonally, right? Both sides are still mirror images of each other. You can basically just take any old circle, and I'll uh, erase these for right now, and divide it into one plane, two planes, three planes, four planes, as many planes as you want. As long as both sides are mirror images of each other, you are looking at a radially symmetric organism. Now, the reason why we have to focus on radially symmetric organisms is because they are very simple organisms. They're very simple animals for the following reason. Many radial, so animals that have radial symmetry, uh, organisms are, the term is sessile, okay? Sessile. S-E-S-S-I-L-E. -S -S -E. What does sessile mean? That means that they live attached to a substrate. Okay? Attached to substrate. Essentially, when you look at a radially symmetric animal, if you notice one or if you look for one, your textbook has images, I think, of them, or just Google radial, radial animal, you will notice that they are never moving. 
Okay, they are usually just stand. They're just usually still and stuck to something, and that something is a substrate, and that's where they live. They're very simple organisms for that reason. Okay, so that's the type of symmetry they have. That's the type of body plan that they have. Go back to our working definition. What is a body plan? Particular set of morphological and developmental traits. In this organism, the morphological trait of focus of comparison, key evolutionary step, is that it decided not decided, but it exhibits radial symmetry as a result of its evolutionary step of symmetry. Okay, so that's our radial story. Um, another one of interest to us, and should be of interest to you, because this is us, is bilateral symmetry. So what is it mean? What does it mean to be bilateral? Okay, we established radial. What does bilateral mean? Bilateral simply means that you are a two-sided organism. That's me and you. Now. For a more technical definition, we can say bilateral organisms are organisms in which the body can be divided uh, by only one plane through the midline, by only one as opposed to many, multiple, by only one plane through, through, not through, there we go, through the midline. Okay? Essentially what we have as humans is a right half. Okay? And we can divide that through a plane right here and we have a left half. That's all there is to it. Okay? So, um basically the right half and the left half, both of which are going to be roughly mirror images of each other. Mirror images, roughly speaking, okay? So if you take a, a very basic rendition of a human like this with two eyes and a, a nice smile, right? And uh, maybe an ear here and an ear here, maybe even a nose, right? We can take this human, this bilateral organism, and divide them right in the middle. Hopefully I can get this somewhat in the middle, right? And we roughly have their images, right? We have an eye on this side, an eye on this side, half a nose, half a nose, half a smile, half a smile, one ear, one ear. You get the point. So right here, we have a bilateral organism. Many animals exhibit this. Many animals that exhibit this are higher order animals. The reason why, the reason why many complex animals do this is because bilateral organisms are always tied with the idea of cephalization. So it's another new term for you to remember. Cephal refers to the head region, okay? This is basically the development of the head region, and that's what we'll write down. Development of head region. When the head region is developing, you are undergoing cephalization, okay? Cephalization is a key animal evolutionary step, a key feature that we can compare with other animals, a key morphological and developmental trait that leads to the following. It's the developmental uh, development of the head region, and it's eventually going to be the location of something critical to you and I, critical to what I'm doing right now, which is speaking and writing and talking, and critical to you, which is listening and writing and everything that you do every day, the location of the central nervous system. The brain, the spinal cord are both the central nervous system. They don't just pop up out of nowhere. They are a process, they are a system that comes through the cephalization. And cephalization happens within bilateral organisms, okay? Development of the head region, location of our CNS, central nervous system. Um, just to, this does not put the central nervous system to any justice whatsoever, but we can just broadly state that in the animal world, the central nervous system is important because it coordinates complex movements. Central nervous system is the reason why you can coherently write down exactly what I'm writing down here. It's the reason why you can coherently listen and understand me, hopefully, okay? That CNS is working right. So now we have our radial symmetry, our bilateral symmetry, bilateral mainly us, right? Higher order organisms. Last thing about symmetry is the lack of symmetry, asymmetry. And again, I said something about periphery that I think is important. Periphera are the exception to almost every single animal rule. Okay, They are the simplest, most uh, basic form of an animal. Thus, they exhibit uh, asymmetry. Okay, A is the Latin root for without. Okay, This is going to be an organism that has no plane that will produce 
So no divisional plane will produce mirror images. And a classic example of this is, of course, our periphera. Our poor old periphera, our very basic, very simple animals, the sponges. Okay? So that covers radial symmetry, bilateral symmetry, and asymmetry. Key theme here, same thing with differentiation, the idea of having true tissues or not, morphological and developmental traits that can be compared through a series of evolutionary steps, the evolutionary step of radial symmetry, of bilateral symmetry, of asymmetry, of true tissues or no true tissues, etc. Okay? So that covers our initial view of body plans. We'll continue this discussion in the next video of body plans.